Carla Hinton reporting for the Oklahoman and NewsOK.com. I have with me in the studio today Christina Ariaga. She is executive director for the Beckett Fund for Religious Liberty based in Washington, D.C. Thanks so much for coming in today. My pleasure. I'm so excited to be in Oklahoma City. Okay. Well, I was hoping you would tell me a little bit about yourself and then also tell myself and the viewers a little bit about the Beckett Fund. Oh, absolutely. I'd love to. Um, I am the executive director of the Beckett Fund for Religious Liberty. We were uh, created 20 years ago. We're a public interest law firm okay. that defends the free expression of all religious traditions. Okay. We think of religious liberty as a basic human right and as a foundational principle in this country, something that our founding fathers were very interested in making sure that the government protected, and that's why it is the First Amendment. Uh, now, I feel that the Beckett Fund and myself were sort of joined together because I am Cuban-American. My father escaped Fidel Castro's Cuba. Uh, he married a woman, a German woman, who had been in a concentration camp. So we always grew up with an enormous amount of respect and devotion to the idea that we were living in a country that afforded us these great rights, one of them being religious liberty. And I felt very passionate about it my entire youth. I worked at the United Nations Human Rights Commission and at the Civil Rights Commission. And when I became the executive director of the Beckett Fund, I felt I was in the right place to continue to protect this very important human right. Okay, good, good, good. Well, uh, tell me a little bit about the, the Beckett Fund and your relationship with uh, the Green family of Hobby Lobby fame. So the Beckett Fund for Religious Liberty has been representing the Green family of Hobby Lobby since we filed a lawsuit on their behalf okay. against the Health and Human Services mandate, part of the Affordable Care Act that forces all employers or most employers right. to give a certain, uh, uh, to provide and to pay for their employees for 20 FDA mandated contraceptives. The Green family are devout Christians, as you know. They right. treat their employees wonderfully. They pay more than twice the minimum wage. Mm -hmm. They are only open six days a week. They have very, very excellent practices so for families, for their employees. And they pay for 16 out of the most widely used and available contraceptives. They only objected to four FDA contraceptives. Okay. So they sued and they went all the way to the Supreme Court and they recently won a 5-4 decision in their favor. And what this means for all Americans is that Americans that start a family business can continue as the Green family to live according to their deeply held convictions. Okay, okay, great, great, great. Well, uh, one of the things I wanted to ask you is why do you think the Hobby Lobby case uh, seemed to uh, resonate with America? I think in the last uh, several years, there has been an erosion of religious liberty, of people being able to live according to their deeply held convictions. Okay. But Americans have not been aware of this. The greatest threat to religious liberty currently is the fact that the government is beginning to intervene in matters that are protected by the First Amendment. Okay. So in the case of the Green family of Hobby Lobby, the government threatened them with RS fines. But we also see that we at the Beckett Fund represent many religious ministries like the Little Sisters of the Poor, like Guidestone, religious ministries that serve hundreds of thousands of Americans, poor, homeless, hungry. And all they want to do is continue to do their work, and yet the government is insisting that they provide this gamut of drugs and devices that they cannot in good conscience provide to their employees or to the people they serve. So there is this unfortunate clash right. between the government and people's deeply held convictions. And I think what happened was that the Hobby Lobby family is so beloved that when they told the government, I will not go there, then Americans realized that there was a problem that had been growing and festering and that this is something that we needed to pay attention to. Okay, okay, interesting, interesting. Well, uh, let me ask you this. Um, what are some of the other cases that you'll be working on? Uh, you all, uh, apparently, I, I got on your website and you all have a uh, run the gamut. You have all kinds of uh, cases we, going yes, on. Yes, we at the Beckett Fund like to say that we represent A to Z, Anglican to Zoroastrian. and we represent a, a many faith traditions. We represent people who have sincerely held beliefs. Okay. And this is something that our First Amendment says that the government must protect those rights, not violate them. Okay. Currently, ahead of us, we have a series of 
really interesting cases. One of them is we're protecting keeping the words under God in the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. I feel very personally passionate about this case because when we put our hand over our hearts and we say the words under God, what we are asserting and affirming is a political philosophy that says our rights do not come from the state. They come from God. Therefore, the state, the government cannot take them away. And of course, because my mother was uh, repressed by the Nazi and my father by the Communist Party, and they both come from government structures that said that the rights came from the government, therefore the government can take it away. While when we defend the Pledge of Allegiance in its entirety, we're defending the political philosophy that is in, encapsulated in those words under God. We have fought for the Pledge of Allegiance several times. We have won every single time, and we currently are in a case in New Jersey where Samantha Jones, a very brave 17-year-old high school student, has decided to fight um, the American Humanist Society, an atheist group okay. that wants to have New Jersey children uh, not say the Pledge of Allegiance at all or have an edited version of the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, interesting, interesting. And then you have another case, I think, that may uh, take place uh, next week, maybe, sometime? We're going back to the Supreme Court, yes. Okay. It's, um, we have been before the Supreme Court several times in the last three years. The first time was in a case where we were protecting a Lutheran church, Hosanna Tabor, from the government telling the church leadership, the church ministers, who got to be a minister, who didn't get to be a minister. Okay. Uh, the Wall Street Journal called that case the most important religious liberty case in the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. And what that we won that case 9-0. And what that case said is that the government has no role in choosing who is a minister at a church or a synagogue or at a temple. Now, we have also been before the Supreme Court for the Little Sisters of the Poor. We have been to the Supreme Court for Wheaton College, mm -hmm. uh, the premier evangelical school, and now we're going back to the Supreme Court to defend the rights of prisoners who want to have access to religious materials, to Bibles, to um, kosher diets, and we are telling the Supreme Court that this is a very important right because Rightly so, prisoners give up a lot of their rights when they go to prison, but they should not have to give up their human dignity. And religious liberty comes from human dignity. Prisoners want to have access to religious materials. Okay, okay, good, good. Well, thank you so much for agreeing to uh, this interview today. My pleasure, I love Oklahoma City, I love Oklahomans, and I'm very happy to be here. Good, good, well, thank you, thank you so much. Well, this is Carla Hinton for The Oklahoman and NewsOK.com. To read more about this story, uh, check out The Oklahoman. <laughs>